welcome to Real Talk for People of Faith. I am your host, Marzette McGarry with... Nicole Nic- Rivas. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And we also have with us today, Pastor Pete Watts. Hey, everybody. What's going on? All right. And Tony Rain. Hi, everyone. You got to get real close to the mic, Tony Rain. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Is that better? Yes, it's better. Now, today we are going to talk about Christians or believers celebrating Halloween. Should believers celebrate Halloween? Uh oh. Now, before we talk about that, before we start <laughs> arguing and fighting up in here, <laughs> we want to just first talk to Tony about just a wonderful product that I've used and a lot of people that I know have used. A, um, a body product, body products that she makes. They are handmade, all natural body products. Um, it's actually beauty called products. Let's beauty. Get it straight. Okay, it's to it. make the body beautiful okay, I'll, uh, from beauty. head to toe. Beauty products. Get it right, right now. Yes. Beautiness. <laughs> Beautiness. <laughs> right. So we we have. It's, they're called Raining Beauties Natural Skin Care Products. Is that right? Yep. Rain, yes, Raining Beauties Natural Skin Care Products, and um, I want to just quickly give them your website, and then I'm gonna we're gonna ask you some questions. But we'll do your website twice. So if you just if just for future references, her website is Raining. That's R E I G N I N G. Right, Raining Beauties B E A U T I E S dot us dot U S. That's Raining Beauties dot U S. So All now, right. Tony, tell, yes, it's good, right? Now, wait, I'm going to just say, Tony just let, <laughs> she just let Pastor Pete and Nicole try her body oil. Oh, yeah. It was, and we all the, smell like roses smell like up roses. in here. <laughs> roses. roses. We smell roses. sweet. Yes. It yeah. is so nice. Yes. And and I told her I couldn't try it because I was already from this morning wearing her uh, bergamot hair. Yes. I wear the body oil and the body butter. Um, butter. And I tell everybody because I sell, <laughs> I sell Tony's products at my at my nail salon, y'all. And oh. and I tell them that um, that I always say this is what what I do. When I get out of the shower and I'm, and my body is still moist, I put on body oil, her body oil, oil, and and then I layer it with body butter. And then I put on body mist. And I'm telling you, everywhere I go, people are like, oh, you smell good. I knew I smelled good one day when this little <laughs> old man, I mean, he was, he was, he was, just, he was a little Uh-oh. old man. And you, and, and you could tell he, he, he was just a quiet old man. And he was behind the, the counter at the grocery store. Uh-huh. And he, he said, he was like a Jewish man or something. And he was like, is that you I smell? You you smell beautiful. <laughs> and, he was just like, and I was like, oh, you know, so, because he was just like uh, like astonished, like oh. And so I was like, okay, that that's when your products won me, when the old der Jewish older, looking older, man, yes, yes seasoned, older seasoned, seasoned yes. Jewish looking man who was just like in his own little world, looked like he was just like hypnotized, like oh wait. Yep. Is that you? Oh, you smell beautiful. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm about to give me a sugar daddy. Uh, He's like, watch out there now. Exactly. Like, okay. But anyway, so Tony, tell us. Tell us about your product. Okay. Um, Tell us, actually, what made you start making body products, natural skin care products? What made you start making those? Believe it or not, I've always kind of... um, made my own product um, and experimented with different things. So I've been doing it off and on for years on on different levels, Mm -hmm. not on the scale that I'm on now, but, Mm -hmm. you know, pretty much I've been kind of dabbling in it for a while. Um, I think what really made me just finally do it is both my husband and I could not find any product that we were happy with. And I was just laid off. I was struggling with depression. I was just like in a place where I was just, my creativity, I started tapping into my creativity to really help me to just kind of like push through some Mm -hmm. different barriers that I was struggling with. And that happened to be one of them. He Mm -hmm. needed shaving cream. And after shave, I needed some moisture and some, you know, hair products. So I just started making stuff for us. Mm-hmm. And the more that I made things for us, I started my, he started talking about it to our neighbors and friends. 
And, you know, much like you, how people smell the different things that you wear, they would smell things on me. And they're like, what are you wearing? And I was like, oh, it's just something I made. And so from there, it just kind of spun out. And um, I started giving out more and more samples. Mm. And then it was just like the Holy Spirit was just like, you know what? This is a business. Mm. Mm. And this is a business. But the problem at that point was that I was so like stretched out, like doing other things, right. you know, like. I was reupholstering things. Mm-hmm. I was sewing. I was making jewelry. I was doing all kinds of so stuff. So you're just a creative I, at heart. Yeah, I just really started to tap into my creativity, you know, in ways that I hadn't in a long time. Yeah. Um, and so I met with this lady, and she really helped me to focus on, like, the branding and how to, like, really take off. And within that first year, my business just kind of started and took off. Mm-hmm. So. Nice, okay, nice. Nice, yeah, nice. So at the source of it, it starts at home, you yeah, know, yeah, as yeah. most things do. Yes, 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 good, good. So you, you're at home, you're kind of feeling that, like down because you got laid off and <laughs> you just start being creative Yeah. Um, using the gifts God gave you. Yes. And uh, you and your husband had particular needs regarding your own skincare and you started experimenting. And now we have Raining Beauty yes. natural skincare products. Yes. Nice. Amen. Yes. Now, um, what do most people like about your products? Most of most of your customers, most of your consumers, what have you heard, heard most about um, the what people like? Like, what do people tell you most that they like or they appreciate and kind of value about the, your products. The best thing is the consistency and what it does for their skin. Mm-hmm. Because most people, when it comes to their skin, your skin is your most valued asset, mm-hmm. right? And so for most people, they want something that's going to work for them. That's mm-hmm. going to, you know, really moisturize, really give them that, I guess that feeling, you know, of, of moisture, that look of, um, of youth and different things like that. So, for for me, the feedback that I get is is that they love the way that it moisturizes moisturizes their skin mm-hmm. and makes them look and feel youthful. Mm-hmm. And then the mm-hmm. second part is they love the fragrance mm-hmm. because the great thing about the oils is that it saturates into your skin right. so that the scent matches your body chemistry. So whatever mm. you guys could have the same fragrance on, but it'll smell completely different mm. because your body chemistry. And so those are the two things that I get the most. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, you were talking about the whole branding piece, and I'm really into to branding. Um, and I'm looking at your logo. Uh, and so can you kind of talk about uh, this logo here and the branding and the, the meaning behind that logo and your company? Yes. So the logo is is a T and an R, but it's also a music note, and it also has a crown on um, the music is because I'm a singer also. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's where raining came from, from the name Tony Rain. So uh-huh. raining and raining for me just means taking authority. God gave us authority. And so for me, it was just me really taking charge of my life, mm-hmm. and taking charge of my ministry, taking charge of just a different purposes that I have. And so that's where the Tony Rain came from. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and right. so I just wanted a logo that captured all of those different things that that authority, that royalty, that that you know had my initials in it, TR, and that also you know had an accent of the music mm-hmm. because that's a passion of mine. That's really dope. I um, really like that. And uh, do the colors uh, have a meaning or anything? Or no, they no? do okay. not. I just like red and black. All right. I can't go deep on that. Sorry. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, you can say it's the blood of Jesus, right, right there. The blood, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, I'll take you know, it. I want to give to Amen. The blood of Jesus. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I want to talk a little bit about the various products you have. So we know you have rose oil because yes. we're all smelling sweet. And we're not just making that up, y'all. No. We're in here. Yeah, we're smelling Before great. we started, I was going to have an issue because I couldn't stop smelling myself, which, you know, thank God it's not TV because that would just be weird. <laughs> but it really did smell wonderful. I've also tried your lip balm before, yes. which was amazing. Yeah. And then um, you mentioned body butter. Body butter. And the one you're using is the pear. Bergamot pear. Bergamot right. pear. Okay. I don't want to sound uninformed, but I don't know what bergamot is. What is bergamot? Bergamot is 
it's an essential oil that mm. has an amazing um, scent to it. In 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 much like all of the other ones, it it has like a lot of properties in it that's really beneficial to your skin. Um, whether it's anti-inflammatory or you know help with redness or different things like that. Mm -hmm. But the scent itself, it's it's really nice because it. Like all of the other scents I use, it just, it goes into, you know, your body, saturates into your body mm -hmm. and just has this amazing aroma that comes from it because it's mixing in with your body chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's, I, I don't know if we mentioned it, but I want to definitely put a line under it. All of your products are 100% natural. Yes. They're yes. natural, a combination of natural and organic products. Mm -hmm. And I know you use a lot of essential oils and... Yeah. And people who are familiar with essential oils know that they have a lot of healing properties. Mm -hmm. So they not only heal and nourish the skin, but they have a lot of internal benefits too. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you're, you're using essential oils. You're also using shea butters and other things, very nourishing for the yes. skin, but also anti-inflammatories yes. and things. Yeah. So when people are using your products, they're not only healing their skin, they're yeah. healing their bodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are because everything um, that happens, you know, it's it starts from the inside and comes out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what you put in your body is going to manifest in your skin and in other areas um, in your in your body. So, um, it's it's really great. It's mm -hmm. really great. I'm sorry, I just got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That happens. <laughs> it's like what's happening? Here? I, I don't it's happens. okay. <laughs> I don't even know if I answered that question. No, go ahead. Redo it. It's okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. So um, can you please ask me again? <laughs> oh, I was just talking about because, uh, like I said, I have used your products myself. So I know they're amazing. And there's a lot of focus on skin. And that is a blessing and a benefit. And like you started to say, right. is what's going on inside your yes. body is reflected on your Mm -hmm. on your skin right right it comes out in your skin because I, I think i remember reading something like 70 percent of the waste products that your body produces it it releases it through your skin yes mm. so imagine mm -hmm. if you're putting bad stuff on top of your skin mm. it's going inside of your body mm -hmm. so it can cause all kinds of damage if you have a lot of chemicals and things that going inside of your body mm -hmm. your skin is the largest organ that you have yeah so it's it's just as important to take care of your skin as it is to drink water as it is to eat healthy you know all of mm -hmm. those other things they all go hand in hand mm -hmm. so you can be doing all of these great things with your skin but if you're eating like really crappy food then it's it's kind of counterproductive like you know what pizza I mean? Okay. I have to tell y'all <laughs> there is this pastrami pizza that you can get in LA. Yes, it is it pizza really with pastrami, mustard, and pickles on it. Yeah. And, I, and I, I broke down in weakness today <laughs> and I had it, and now they're giving me a hard time about it. She, but I'm going to get her products. Yes. I'm going to get her. I'm going to get some oils <laughs> and we're going to take care of what went down earlier with the pastrami pizza <laughs> that was wrong pastor pete <laughs> Up your past. See, the pastor <laughs> brought up my past. That was that was a full two hours ago. Why are you bringing up the past? Was it the past or was pastrami? <laughs> oh, that was wrong. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was wrong. That was wrong. <laughs> Before we just close up talking about Tony's product, we want to encourage all of you to go to her website. Her website is RainingBeauties.org. Us or U.S., yes. right? Is it mm -hmm. us? It's not it's us. US. It's U.S.? US. Okay. I never heard of that before. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Raining Beauties. www.rainingbeauties. That's R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G. B-E-A-U-T-I-E-S. Dot U.S. Go to her website. If you want your skin to have a youthful appearance and feeling, and if you want supple skin and also you want to smell great, she has such wonderful mm -hmm. fragrances that I love. Mm -hmm. And I used to use baby powder. 
I right, oh my god, my favorite is baby powder. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. Baby but I, I I used to use all the different places. I would go to all the different you know places that we normally go for body products. I'm not sure if I can say them or not. Mm -hmm. But now I only want your stuff. I'm like you know it's I only want to buy your stuff and it's not expensive. Right. It's very reasonably priced. Nothing is over twenty dollars. Even what fifteen? Nothing over fifteen dollars. Really, right? Anything? Um, some things are, yeah. Some things mm -hmm. are, okay. Well, nothing I buy right. is worth $15. <laughs> it's really affordable. Yeah. It's, it's affordable. really affordable. Mm -hmm. affordable. So we, we just want to encourage you to go to her website and um, look at our products. And Tony, we want to thank you for thank joining you. us today. Uh, we love your products and thank we just you. wish you well. Thank you thank so you. much. Amen. 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 And they can also. Oh, well, yeah. Go ahead. Two go ahead. Things, tell them. Thank two you. Things. So if you go to my website and you place an order and mention that you heard about us on this show, you will get a free gift. Oh, oh nice. I will get a free gift, Mark. That no, 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 no. Whoever <laughs> makes <laughs> an <laughs> order. order. Get, whoever oh. places an order on the website <laughs> and mentions in the comments section when you place your order that you heard about Raining Beauties from on this Real show. Talk for People of Faith. Yes. On Real Talk Real for Talk. People yes. of Faith or Inner City Women of Faith. Or Inner so City Women of Faith. Of those, yes. You will get a free gift. All right. Free All gift. Right. Hear that. Right. Free, free gift. gift. Free if it's gift. free, it's for me. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. Me. Right. <laughs> and if you're in the city of Los Angeles, you can always find Raining Beauty products at Sil Williams Nail and Spa at 4376 Southwestern Avenue, Los right. Angeles, California, 90062. Thank you, Thank Marcia. you. Thank oh, you. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Bless the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. God is good. Now we're going to go into our topic for today, which is Halloween. Should believers celebrate Halloween? All right. Um, Tony's going to stay with us for that. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Tony is a believer. She's a believer. So we letting her stay, y'all, for that one. Um, now, I, I just have, um, I just want to talk briefly about the history of Halloween. Of There's a lot of different history in it, and it's, they all are consistent in, in what I found. So I found a compilation of, of Halloween history, and I just want to quickly talk about it. And then I'm going to share two scriptures. We're going to actually direct, we're going to actually record at least two shows in this regard, because Halloween is people, people are celebrating it the whole month. Right. Mm -hmm. So we just want to talk about it and kind of give, yeah. give you out there believers kind of a, a perspective that hopefully resonates with you. And that helps you just kind of, you know, celebrate in a way that is, um, in a, in a way that is consistent with how the Holy spirit is leading you. Mm -hmm. Right. So hopefully we can do that. So now, uh, different sources, Tell us that uh, Halloween is rooted in European folk folk customs, right? right. Uh, we know that it comes from the Druids, which were priests. They were uh, not, but they weren't uh, product. I mean, they weren't Catholic priests. Mm -hmm. They were um, they were pagan priests, right? The Druids were pagan priests who worshipped nature, and um, they they celebrated Halloween in order to honor Samhain. Which who was considered to be the Lord of the dead. And they celebrated him on October 31st. Right. And I think we've all pretty much heard that before. Historically, we've heard that. Um, and then um, so the, 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 the Druids believe that Samhain was um, was they believe that he would call up the dead who had died throughout the whole year. He would call them up and he would call them to actually enter into animals and things like that. And then on the 31st of, of October, he would re he would re release their spirits to kind of roam around. That's that was what the that's what history says. And so, um, and then we 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 hear about uh, what is it the pumpkins and some people call them jack o' lanterns, right? Mm -hmm. And how well that was because um, when these when these dark spirits spirits would roam, particularly one called Jack, people believe the in, in one particularly called Jack who who was not allowed into heaven or hell. Well, they would put put a light inside of a jack-o'-lantern or inside of a pumpkin in the United States, um, which later became that in the United States, that was to scare off, to, that was to scare off Jack, right? So that's why we do the whole pumpkin thing and scare off Jack and other evil spirits. Um, and then it just kind of goes into talking about how uh, the, the, um, why we do things like decorate with corn stalks and pumpkins and other and other things that we decorate with. Well, this was a way that they pray or that, the way that pe the people in these custom, I mean, these folk folk customs, how they worshiped or praised the gods of nature, right? The different lords that they that they served 
Um, now, I think a, a lot of Christians t- um, celebrate, or particularly the Catholic tradition, celebrate, um, what is it called? All the Saints first, Day. All Saints, All Saints Day, Day, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, All Saints Day. And so, um, I, now this I had never heard about All Saints Day. I knew about All Saints Day, but this was something that was new for me that I actually learned this t- when I was researching this time um, about how All Saints Day was, was actually uh, connected with the celebration of Halloween in that um, the when the Catholic Church, when, when they felt like they had some kind of victory over what, the, the, was it the, the Celtics? No, the Celts, I'm sorry. Celtics, that's a basketball, that's the basketball team, team, right? Okay, the Celts um, and another group that they actually wanted to um, to kind of to kind of like combat them celebrating evil spirits. Mm-hmm. So they celebrated people who died, who they felt like were were saints, saints. or good mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they did that on November the 1st. That was their, their attempt to combat what the Celts and the Druids had been celebrating on the 31st, right? We know that for All Saints Day. Um, and, and so and so this, this, we kind of know that basically the history of Halloween, we know that it was rooted in this kind of like pagan religion, right? Mm-hmm. We know the history. I mean, that's that you can't really argue that. So um, that's something that we just wanted to put out there so that we can know. Because I, I, I'm also learning that a lot of Christians don't even know that. They just kind of they don't know that they don't know the history of Halloween. So it's, it's important that when we do make decisions, we kind of know what we're, you know, kind of know where we're coming from. And then quickly, we always share a scripture um, before we start talking. And so the scripture I have is Matthew 13. I'm sorry, Matthew 5, 13, um, where it says, you are the salt of the earth. Jesus says this. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. All right. So now (laughs) we can start talking. Now, I want to start off just kind of... um, talking about the the struggle I think it is for believers who happen to be parents because it is hard I think when we have kids a lot of, a lot of people struggle with that because it's like how am I gonna you know how do you when your kids are in school and and all their friends are celebrating Halloween but well, parents who think their kids shouldn't or who kind of struggle with it it becomes a little hard in that way and then it comes it's kind of hard because I think a lot of Christians have friends who who say no, absolutely no Halloween, no, mm-hmm. no, no, absolutely no. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear about it. It's all evil. Mm-hmm. And then some Christians are kind of like, no, it's wonderful. It's just a, a fun day. It's mm-hmm. not a big deal. I can wear what I want to wear, do what I want to do on this day. You know, I'm mean, all. So it's kind of we have all these controversies within the body of Christ. So it can be a little challenging to 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 make a choice as to what what you or I as an individual decide to do mm-hmm. or how do we decide mm-hmm. to engage this um, yeah. this particular holiday? I yeah. think that's a really important point mm-hmm. because um, as I was sitting here before we went on air, I took an informal survey um, of where everybody kind of stood on it. And I think it's going to be a real fun show because yeah. nobody gave the same answer. Yeah. So we have four people in the room <laughs> and the three that I surveyed, each one gave a different answer. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the only one in the room who has no position, mm-hmm. but I think also because I'm the only one in the room who has no kids. Mm-hmm. You don't have kids either. Okay, so, but I, so I don't particularly celebrate it, but I'm a grown person. Right. I have no, no cause to celebrate it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just extra work for me that I have no <laughs> desire to put in. So um, <laughs> I, I, I don't have a firm, heartfelt position but i agree with you people who have kids they have more of an investment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because i have seen both ways in people as adults right which is i have lots of friends who were raised in very christian homes and they are very far away from everything that their parents did because it was so suffocating Mm -hmm. and so overwhelming Mm -hmm. and so religious and not filled with spirit at all Mm-hmm. And now they're adults, and all that their parents tried to instill in them 
it's not there. Or even worse, they have maintained the trappings of religion because they got that part, (laughs) but they have absolutely no relationship, Mm -hmm. right? And then I know other people who are the other direction who their parents, they they have no concept that it might be right or wrong because their parents never taught them. Mm -hmm. And I... And I know there are certain things in my life that I wish my parents, although my parents were wonderful, there are certain aspects of my spiritual walk that if they had had awareness, mm-hmm. it would have helped me with my awareness. Mm-hmm. So I d- those are the two things I see in my adult friends of maybe parents didn't walk that line right. Mm-hmm. So those who have children, it would be very interesting for me to hear from you how you walk that yeah. line and why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I have, uh, so I have three kids, so I've mm-hmm. gone through this, you know, three different three times, times <laughs> uh, for the past 18 years, or mm-hmm. however old they um, were when they You don't stopped. remember how old <laughs> your kids are? Well, when they stopped, <laughs> when they stopped wanting us to do, you know, Halloween, Halloween stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and I was so, about to get worried, Pastor Pete. I know, Pete. right? <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, we, we always, um, um, I wouldn't say celebrated Halloween, we always had an alternative. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we call it a, the alternative to Halloween. Um, and that was because uh, the churches that we've always attended um, always had an event or activities uh, mm-hmm. for kids in the youth ministry. Um, when me, me coming up and then when I became a parent and you know taking my kids to church, there was always room and space uh, for mm-hmm. kids to be in a safe environment uh, mm-hmm. that was a Christian environment to celebrate what we didn't call Halloween, but we called a harvest festival mm-hmm. or we called Hallelujah Night. Uh, depending on what church tradition and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, and so when, when I became a parent, um, it was no it wasn't a big leap um, or or uh, any kind of uh, conflict um, with me um, and my kids in, in terms of uh, celebrating that day, um, mm-hmm. because we all knew what we were celebrating, what we weren't celebrating. Um, and so it went all the way down to the costumes that we would allow our kids to wear. So we wouldn't allow our kids to, you know, be devils or to be ghosts or to be, you know, Jason and Freddie and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. uh, that uh, <laughs> promotes that kind of uh, uh, evilness. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, but we didn't, uh, you know, go over the top and say, okay, you can, you only can be Jesus. That's the only thing you can dress up as. <laughs> you can only right? dress up as Jesus. <laughs> three Jesuses. So, right. Three Jesuses, right? And, and so, some people might right. think that's blasphemy right, exactly. to let them dress, dress up as, as Jesus. Jesus. Exactly. And so, um, so they had nice, you know, costumes. They were, you know, superheroes and all these other things. Um, and it was just, you know, something that we, uh, that we did, um, mm-hmm. being a part of the church. And then when we didn't have it at the church, um, I remember, uh, one year we had, it at our home um we had a harvest festival in our backyard so we went and got bales of hay we got right. um all kind of stuff and the kids from the neighborhood all came to our house mm. for um for this uh harvest festival um mm-hmm. and, and 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 so that's how we uh, did it at my, at, at my house um and we use it as an opportunity um uh to be a witness uh to uh the community and so um you read a scripture uh, earlier that said uh you know you are the salt of the earth and let your light shine and um, and so part of uh, the Halloween tradition is if your light is turned off, that tells neighbors, don't come knock on your door. Mm-hmm. But if your light is on, it says, come knock. So if we're going to be the light of the world, then leave your porch leave light your on light <laughs> so that people can come and knock on your <laughs> door. Amen, and amen. it gives you an opportunity to be on mission for God and be a witness. So if you're giving candy, um, you, you're probably the only. Uh, uh, Wait, Pastor, but you gonna have to, we're going to let you start okay. first. We got like 40 seconds. All right. So you're going to start when we come back. We are going to have should Christians, should believers or Christians celebrate Halloween part two next week. Join us for Real Talk with People of Faith. And we're going to continue talking about this topic because we know y'all are wanting to know about it. And mm. Pastor Pete was going at it. And he was going to finish this. He was to tell y'all it. what to do. Had, we didn't he even ready. get to the three other opinions. <laughs> now, right? So we are going to do bad. that. So join us. you got to come back next week, y'all. We, when are we here, Nicole? I always forget. We're here Tuesdays and we're, Thursdays. Yeah, we're here Tuesdays at 6 p.m., Thursdays at 1.30. Pacific time. Pacific time. So join us for Real Talk with People of Faith. Brought to you by Inner City Women of Faith. And go to our website, innercitywomenoffaith.org. Leave your prayer request, any comments, questions you have. Go to our website. We love you and thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye. Don't worry,